in this video, I want to show you how you can create a dynamic card like this using the built-in card visual in Power BI that allows you to see values, variances, percentage, and total, and allows you to change those values dynamically using slicers, as well as changing the comparisons to different values, like comparing against uh, your budgets or targets and other dynamic formats, like adding pluses and minuses to your values, as well as colors, all of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the card visual is one of the basic visuals that you'd be introduced uh, with when you start working with Power BI. And I've covered it extensively in the past, showing you how you can add different things like dynamic colors and subtitles to it to add some different ways to visualize these cards. Now, the problem with those solutions is that A, it means that I needed to create multiple visuals on top of each other, which means that if you wanted to pin it in a dashboard or move it around, it might not be as convenient as just having one visual. And the second thing is that it's fairly static. So typically you would show it in a card to compare against previous year, for example, but you won't be able to change that comparison to other things. Things. like you might want to see how your numbers compare to last year or maybe against your budget or your targets. And Gustav Dudek from LinkedIn has created this super cool solution that just utilizes the subtitle feature in Power BI to create a lot of the dynamic elements um, and make it, make it more dynamic. So I really wanted to give it a try to see if I can do it for myself. And I think I've figured it out. So I want to show you how to do it step by step. So here is the reports that I prepared for today. There's just a few things here, and uh, this is where the baseline would be. So we have a fake table here with the sales table and with some different values like your total sales, your budget, targets, and what the values are for previous month and same period last year. And these are the values that we want to compare against. And the value that we want to show is the sum of sales. Already pre-created all of the measures here. Um, so you don't, because that's not really the point of this demo. And uh, let's say we got, get the task of uh, wanting to show the sum of sales and the comparisons against any of these values. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a card visual and we're just going to add the total sales, which is the typical route that you would take. The problem with this is, well, actually, you can do it like this, too. But what's good about the card visual and the latest Power BI versions is that you can add more dynamic elements to this more than what you could before. So what do I mean by that? So if we click the more options here to show the format pane. You can see that in the callout value, you can add uh, dynamic values, obviously, based on the measure that you add there. You can change the colors individually using uh, measures. And under title, you can add on top of already the callout label here, the total sales. You can add dynamic titles as well. So this is a title. So you'll see it's up there. And on top of that, there's also another one here, subtitle, which again, also allows you to add conditionally formatted measures and calculations for yourself. So this adds a lot of uh, ways for you to add dynamic elements within this same uh, card, which is what we will use and utilize in a second. So this is a subtitle. I'm going to just format them to what we need. So I'm just going to put them in the middle here, maybe make the call outs to be slightly smaller. Probably just have them in the same font as well. So we'll make it 15 category. We'll just change all of them to the same font like this. All right, so here is now the basic card that we want to work with. Now, from Gustav's solution, there are a few things that I really liked, and I just wanted to see how you would work your calculations to each of those elements. So the first bit is the title at the top, which um, is going to be pretty simple, um, but you can create it dynamically if you wanted to. So you can just say total sales here. Uh, so that will be the title of your card. Pretty simple. I'll make it slightly smaller. We can now add the value 
of what we want the total sales because what we want to do is we want to have the the title of the card at the top we want the value instead of being in the callout value we want it to be in the subtitle we want the variance the percentage and you know the plus or minus here in the callout value instead and then in the uh, label we want to show what we're comparing against so let's start by updating the uh, the subtitle so what we want to do and what you'll notice uh, typically this is probably what you would do is you'd go to subtitle go to fx and just say oh i just want to pick the uh, total sales but it won't let you and that's because in subtitles you can only put text values so it could be text column or text measure but it won't let you choose any measures or columns that are uh, numerical so it needs to be text formatted so what we're going to do is we're first going to create this text formatted total sales. So KPI total sales, and we're going to say uh, total sales like this. And then we're going to wrap it with the format string like this. And then the format string, we're just going to fictionally say that our total sales is in British pounds like this zero. Sorry, it should be like this zero. And that should be it. So that's the formatted total sales. But to convert this into a string, we're just going to add an empty value like this. So now you have a KPI total sales that shows you the total sales in pounds formatted, but in a text format. That sounds a bit confusing, but basically it just allows you to put it in a subtitle. So we're going to go back to our subtitle format here under the FX icon. We'll select now our new KPI total sales. If you hit OK, there we go. So we have the number right there for us. I'm just going to make this value a little bit more prominent because we actually want this one to be the value instead of the callout value. I'm just going to make it prominent like this. And we're going to create a bit of a separation between the top values and then the bottom values here. So I'm going to create, let's see, a background. We'll create a light background here and we'll make these callouts slightly smaller, just a tiny bit smaller like this and the callout value as well to be a little bit smaller. And we're going to update this in a second as well. And uh, let's do a bit more styling here. Uh, what else can we do? So we can remove the, or we can add the visual border, make it as gray and add some rounded corners to make it look a little bit nicer. And there we go. So that's pretty much done. The next thing that we want to do from here is to create and calculate the variance between our total sales against what we want to compare against. So to keep it simple, we'll start to compare with budget first. And then I'm going to show you how you can switch those calculations to other ones later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new measure right here. We're going to name this one. Uh, well, we'll just name it total sales. API total sales versus budget. So that's what we're going to compare against for now. So we're going to start by creating a few variables that uh, we might need. So we're going to create var here, and then we're going to calculate the total sales minus the budget. So we are putting it in a variable so we can understand later what we want to add in this um, variance plus or minus. Next, we're going to add a percentage, which is basically just com like calculate the variance in percentage. So we're going to add a divide total sales against the budget like this. And then minus one. So that will create the plus or minus percentage. Next, we're going to create a logic for the sign, the symbol at the front, which uh, we're going to do a simple if statement to say if the variable is greater than zero then do a plus else don't do anything so just leave it as whatever it is because if it's negative it will just show negative anyway now that we've done that we we'll just do a simple return and then we're going to create this concatenation so the first thing that we want to do is show the the percentage difference so sign and then we're going to add the uh, percentage but the percentage we need to wrap with a format because we want to make sure that it's showing in percentage with however many decimals that you might want. So we're going to say like this 0, 0.0 percentage. And then we're going to add this separator. So we want this pipe like this. 
and then we want to then do another sign. Just do like this, and then variable, but we're going to just start with format then. So we want var variance, and then same thing. So we want this to be formatted in the way that we want. So it'll be like this, and that should be it. So now what I'm going to show you, so KPI total versus budget, so maybe, yeah, so let's just leave it as it is actually. And let's now go back to our card visual here, change on the build, change the field to instead of showing total sales, because we're already showing it in the subtitle, we'll switch that into something else. So we'll choose the one that we've just done. So here, as you can see, it shows us the total sales 44,000 pounds is saying that against the budget, which the budget for whatever we've currently selected is 99,000. That's 55% lower. It shows you the percentage as well as the value, the variance value. And this is exactly where we want to be at. Now, typically what you would do, probably a logical way to do it as well, is to create a, um, a disconnected table to be able to switch. But the problem, I've encountered some problems doing that. So instead, I have decided to use field parameters instead, even though it's a little bit uh, weird to do because it means that we have to recreate these measures. At least it will allow us to switch what the calculation is uh, below our card here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this measure that we've just created, create a new measure. I'm going to create total sales versus uh, target. And then we'll change all of the references to budget to target instead because everything else will stay the same. Uh, versus last month. And then the, here we're going to use previous month, which is the measure for getting whatever it was last month. And then last one versus last year, which I believe the measure is called same period last year. Like this. Okay, so now we have these four different measures that compares the total sales against whatever the value that we want to compare against. And now we need to find a way to swap them around. So this is where the field parameters will come in handy. So I believe it's under modeling, new parameter, fields parameter. We'll select all of those KPI calculations that we've just done. So budget, target, last month, last year. I'm just going to rename them to uh, the name of these parameters here in our field parameter needs to be the name that you want to see at the very bottom of our uh, card here, because that's what will update that dynamically. So we're going to change this into versus last month. Uh, we'll just name this one comparisons. All right, so now we can select from our slicer here what we want to compare against. So let's just compare it by budget first. So if we select this card now and under build, we'll change the field instead of using our measure to show what the value is in our comparisons. So it hasn't changed yet. See what happens when I change the comparisons. So now it's comparing against the target against last month and against last year. And that also changes depending on what dates you pick in the date slicer here, which is uh, is pretty cool. Now, the last thing that is a little bit complicated um, is to add colors. So colors is a good way to signify if the numbers that you're looking at is good or bad. So for example, you might want to show if it's a negative value like this, you want it to show as red. If it's a positive, you want to show as green. I mean, it's a pretty good indicator, pretty quick way to, to see if your values are doing good or bad. Now, there isn't an easy way to do this apart from just creating your logic within the measure. But if you follow me, it should be, you should be able to do it as well. So we're going to create a new measure here. We're going to just name it KPI color. We're going to create a few variables here. So first we're going to create a selected value. So whatever is selected in our comparisons table. So um, uh, it's just so that we can refer back to it later. And then we're going to create the variable to um, look and see what is currently selected in this field parameter. So uh, we're going to put true here. And then we're going to say, if the selected 
but the output of it is like fields. It, it, it's a bit weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see what is in this in this field. So we're going to use contain string to say if this thing contains target somewhere, then it needs to show or it needs to compare total sales minus target like this. So this value that it returns will be what will define if the color is positive or negative, if it's green or red. So we're going to do a few of these statements. So we're going to say if it contains a budget, then we want to compare total sales against budget. Then if it contains last month, then we want to use previous month. Oops, oops. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. And then the last one, since there's only one, we're just going to do total sales minus same period last year. So it's aired out because we're not done yet. I just accidentally hit enter. Now we're going to do a return statement. So the return statement is another switch statement, unfortunately. It's a bit dirty, but it works. So we're going to do if the value is greater than zero, then we want the color to be green. If now the variance is less than zero, then we want it to be red. If not, if it's zero, it will just be black like this. So that's the KPI colors done. And as you can see, it's dynamic based on what the comparisons is currently selected. So um, if I just show it to you here in a card, you'll see what happens. So if I make a selection, you'll see that it changes based on my comparisons and it gives me the correct color. So all we need to do is assign that color to a value here in our card. So in uh, Gustav's demo, I just put it in the, the callout value here at the bottom. So that's what we'll try to do. But you can add it anywhere. You can add it even at the on the actual value in our subtitle. So we're going to go to where is it? So callout value is the bottom part. So this is where we want to add the colors. So we're going to click the conditional formatting here. We'll choose it based on the field value. And we'll choose KPI color. If you now hit OK, let's just leave this. And there you go. So you're all set up. So you now have the ability to go to different months like this and then the ability to also switch what you're comparing against, showing you the variance in percentage against the whatever the value is, as well as showing you colors, showing green or red. And that's really it for this video. I hope you're now a little bit more familiar with how you can squeeze the card visual to its full potential using a few techniques uh, along with the subtitles. If you want to learn more about Gustav Dudek's uh, technique, I'll leave a link to his original post on LinkedIn. And I think he deserves a follow because he has a lot of sort of data visual techniques that, I mean, they're, they're quite unique for me and I'm learning just following his posts. So um, give him a follow because I think you will learn a lot from him. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so that you do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really liked this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.